when you say what, sorry? Would you like to be tested in the Holy Bible? I'm going to go and just show that. Okay. If I could then refer you to, um, to uh, Gloria Williams' witness statement. Yes. If in paragraph three, she suggests that the debt was incurred and is still due and owing, whereas I'm going to try and show that the debt has not yet arisen. Um, in paragraph five, my, the defendant provided a detailed specification to the defendant, uh, to the claimant, sorry, and I would suggest that it is necessary to take this to further trial in order to gain access to that exact specification to see exactly what that has suggested is unsure exactly what is in this specification and whether that will actually relate to the case that the, there is any mention of, of the need to test under the cold weather conditions. In paragraph six, the defendant also, uh, the claimant also suggests that the system was automatic and would sense the air temperature and turn on the boiler automatically if the air temperature fell below four degrees. This has actually failed to occur. The defendant's flowers in the greenhouse have completely died and the system has failed to work and this has not turned on on the evening of the 28th, 29th of September when the temperature fell below four degrees. In paragraph seven, the claimant suggests that she did on site on the 2nd of July test, indeed test the system. She found out that everything was running and everything worked perfectly. I do not dispute that she did test this. However, I would suggest that why, how would she know that the system was working perfectly in July? Of course, the system is tested to heat up in cold conditions to keep and maintain a level temperature. In this situation, it was to maintain a temperature of four degrees. However, how can she possibly have tested that in July? The temperature would definitely, definitely not be anywhere near four degrees. And then, as we can see, once the temperature has dropped to four degrees, the system has failed to come on. I would also suggest that we would require the witness statements from the, as she puts it, the two young lads who were working at the place at the time in order to truly get an, a picture of what has actually occurred. In paragraph nine of this statement, she suggests that payment was due within 21 days, 28 days of completion of the work. That is fair enough. However, because the system has not been tested under the cold weather, completion of the work has not actually occurred yet. In paragraph nine, she also goes on to state that, that, that she has not had any complaints about the system until she has received the defendant's defense. However, due to her, the illness caused to, my, uh, to the defendant, of course she was in no way going to want to contact the claimants. It is due to them and their failures that she has lost her business and her health as well. Yeah, what failures? Um, she has had a nervous breakdown. Okay, is that referenced in Ms. Williams' statement? Uh, it is, yes. I will, I will get to that when I address her statement. No, in Miss Williams. Uh, in Miss Williams' statement, it is not, no. Okay, thank you. In terms of the weather report, Miss Williams refers to a London Capital Weather Report, uh, Capital Weather Centre report, marked GW1. I could just refer you to that. Um, this suggests that there were isolated pockets of ground frost. Air temperatures fell from 10 degrees to around 4 degrees by early morning. It suggests around 4 degrees. It doesn't give any specific particular temperatures whatsoever. Um, I feel that this is a non-specific weather report. It's not specifically localised to the area and therefore is not as accurate as it could be. Okay. So if I could now refer you to Miss Johnson's witness statement. Um, in paragraph two, she she's clearly states that she provided a detailed specification because the types of plants she grows are very sensitive to the loss of heat. While she recalls getting the written quotation, she suggests that she did not really read it. However, what she has read in the, clearly read in the, in the quotation is that the quotation is inclusive of the specifications. Now, on the basis of her conversation in March with Mrs. Williams herself, she has been personally assured that she would never expect any payment until the company has shown its products work satisfactorily. And she has clearly expressed to Miss Williams that she is not prepared to pay for the system until it has been tested in cold weather conditions. Mm. She surely the defendant would assume that by incorporating the specifications, this would be included when she's been personally assured that this is obviously a requirement of hers and a specification mm -hmm. of hers. If I could then refer you to 
document FJ1, which is attached to, to Miss Johnson's witness statements. Here you can clearly see that she has suggested that she is definitely uh, requiring that the system be tested under the cold weather conditions. This is definitely, definitely part of her specifications and it is definite that she would have mentioned it to Miss Williams. If I could then further show you to FJ2, which is also attached. This document is a crystal fault weather centre, which is the local weather centre for the area, with the reports for the 28th and 29th of September. Now this gives a much more specific report, saying that the area is particularly susceptible to frost and low air temperatures on still nights, and also suggests that at McWherty Farm, air temperatures also fell to around freezing. McWherty Farm is only about a mile from the defendant's own farm, awesome. and I feel that this shows a much more accurate localised picture of the weather for that evening, suggesting that it has fallen below the temperature of 4 degrees, almost to the point of zero according to the weather report, and the heating system has failed to come on. So not only has it failed to have been tested, but furthermore, when it has actually been needed to be used, the, way the system itself has failed. As Miss Johnson refers to herself, she has a nervous breakdown for which she is now receiving medical help due to the failure and loss of her business. Yeah. So of course there was no way she was going to contact the claimant company. So the relevant procedure rule is rule 24.2.A2 uh, and B. The bird does lie with the claimant to show that there is no real prospect of successfully defending the claim at trial and that there is no other compelling reasons to go to trial. However, I would argue so that this burden has not been charged. Not only has the payment date not arisen, but the heating system has failed to work when the temperatures dropped below the minimum of 4 degrees. It's failed to do its exact purpose that it was not only required for, but also what it was supposed to be tested for. I would argue that is not only defence, but that is also a counterclaim. So, unless you require for anything else, those are my submissions. Well, thank you for those submissions. Yes, by way of response, I, as I only wanted to address one point, um, your friend has referred me to Exhibit FJ2. Yes, sir. Um, would you like to address me on that document? Thank you, sir. Grateful. Um, may I point out that in the, the second quotation, uh, halfway down just below the, uh, the, 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 the documentation, yeah. uh, in the final sentence, it is stated that uh, the cold weather on that night uh, this is very unusual indeed for September. Um, may I briefly refer you, uh, or bring to your attention that, to you that um, the defendant has shown uh, disregard for the clear and unambiguous terms of the contract, and is equally likely that she has shown equal uh, disregard for the directions given in that contract as to the maintenance of the, uh, the greenhouse, um, specifically, uh, for example, the, uh, the direction to close all windows and doors at night to maintain the minimum temperature. Um, so I, I, would, I would submit and suggest that, um, as this is unusual, um, the defendant failed to do so, and furthermore outline, underline the fact that there is no evidence that the heating system failed whatsoever. This would have been easily proved uh, by perhaps um, a mechanics report um, or any, any such evidence to that, to that effect. Uh, there is no evidence whatsoever, sir, and it is very clear that there is a debt outstanding. Okay, thank you for those uh, submissions. And yeah, I believe there's an application for summary judgment um, by the claimant in this, in, this, uh, in this matter. The burden is on the claimant to show that there is a defence um, with a real prospect of succeeding at the trial. In my judgment, the claimant has failed to satisfy that burden. And so for those reasons, I'm going to dismiss the application. So the application for summary judgment is dismissed. That only leaves the question of a costs to be dealt with, if you would like to address me on that point. Um, I'd like to suggest that we make a, a move for the costs in trial. What order would you like to make? Um, uh, order for the costs um, to be made that they will be summarily assessed at the trial. Well, summarily assessed means they're assessed in trial. To be uh, assessed in the cost in case, then, at the trial itself. I see. Um, so and what do you have? Uh, I agree with that. Okay. 